All right. Hello, everybody. This uh, video is going to be on network programming. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the first example that I wanted to show you is going to be UDP. So let's open up our uh, UDP receive program and. <clears throat> Let's open up our uh, UDP send program. Let's take a look at what these uh, look like. So first of all, you got to remember, this is always client server based communication. So the server always has to be running first. The server is basically waiting for incoming communication. And when that happens, uh, that, that'll happen by the client connecting to the server. So the server always has to start first. And in this case, the server is the receiving one. So this one on the left. Um, what does this program do? Uh, here's the usage. This is how we run it. And I've changed this actually now to Python 3. So um, I'm using Python 3 now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import socket and sys. We're going to create a socket object called S. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting this from, this documentation, you can actually go to uh, the docs, python.org, and the library socket, and you can read up all about the documentation on this website. Um, but that's too long to show you for this video. So, uh, yeah. So let's go back to, uh, let's minimize this guy. Now, what socket.socket creates a socket and the address family internet means it's going to be a network socket. Uh, there's other types of socket that for Unix that Linux uses, but we're just gonna be dealing with networking. And socdgram basically means it's UDP. And UDP means it's a datagram, so it means it's connectionless. You can basically send info without actually establishing a connection. There's two types of connections, UDP and TCP. Advantages of UDP is that, the one we're using in this example, is that it's fast and it's basically called fire and forget. In other words, if it if the packets if the get if the packets get to their destination great if they didn't well there's no way we can tell we can hope cross our fingers and hope it gets there but basically you don't really use udp for things that have to have error correction udp is used for things like videos and audio where if you lose a few packets here and there it doesn't really make a huge difference um, so we'll, we'll go into TCP later. So here I'm the next line down, I am, uh, creating a, uh, a host argument and I'm getting sys argv1. So the first command line argument. Now, listen, because I'm going to be doing this demonstration on my computer and I'm, I'm using both here, the server and the client both on the same computer i'm going to be ha i'm have i'm going to have to run this with local host okay but if you are going to be actually doing it with two separate computers two real computers on this is a real computer but what i mean is two two computers uh two separate individual computers on a network then you're going to want to use this as your host zero 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 which means in the bind here below when we get to this you're gonna bind to the actual network card interface okay but in this case we're connecting to localhost which means that we're only listening to connections that are coming from the same machine okay that's why that's why I can demonstrate this to you because I'm doing it on one machine so the port here uh, is sysargv2 second port and on Linux uh, this can be minim minimum of 1025 because uh, 1024 
and below our reserve for uh, root, and so a maximum of 65,000 something. Um, so in this next line here, uh, I'm going to bind, and um, I'm binding to host and port. Okay, this is the server, so the server has to bind to a port, which is basically it's going to start listening on that port. Remember, this is UDP, so no connection. And we go into a, 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 a while true loop. We say before, and now we go receive from. So S was our socket. And this 1024 is basically saying, listen, grab that much data. So one kilobyte, the 1024 stands for bytes. Receive that many bytes at most, maximum, and, and just wait. So this line here, the receive from line, is blocking. In other words, just like input, program execution will stop at that line and um, it will pause execution until some data arrives on the port that we have bind bound to okay so let's go ahead and run this program oops python 3 and we're going to go UDP receive and we're going to go localhost and let's bind to port 4444. Okay, and so now it printed before and now this line here is now blocking. So it's basically like an input, like I said, it's waiting for data to arrive. So now we go to our client program. Again, in the client program, we haven't run it yet, but we've, we're going to make a socket here. And then we are going to get the host and port from command line arguments. And now and then we're going to ask for input. Input does actually block as well. That's a keyboard block. So let's run it. Python 3 UDP send. Now remember, this is the client. Again, we're going to have to... Uh, connect to localhost and we're gonna have to pick the same port because we're sending to that port so here we're listening to this port here we're gonna send to that port now we're gonna type the message and we're gonna say hello and of course that's less than uh, 1024 bytes and so now we go enter and when I do that this program finishes so let's see what happened it actually encodes so it grabs the string hello, then it encodes it into UTF-8, which is Unicode. So this is something that's different from Python 2 to 3. Python 2, you are allowed to send strings, regular strings, but not in Python 3. In Python 3, uh, you have to encode stuff into Unicode, which is UTF-8 by default, uh, which basically means that you're not relegated only to English you can use any char international character set that you would like which is nice okay but I mean we're using English so it doesn't really it doesn't really make a huge difference here but you still have to encode and the reason for that is because once we encode this the line variable goes from here it's a string to here it's going to be a, a byte uh, object and that's what's sent to is waiting for send to is waiting for a, a sending us a, a byte object to this host and port and it did that because host and port remember were here it defined on the command line and so it did it did send to and if you're wondering what send to does there it is here is send to okay you can pause the video and read that if you like it's it's simply sending data to the socket and um, this works with UDP. So let's go back and um, now, so this program is finished now, this return, this program is over. This program is not over yet. So notice uh, it printed hello and it says, so never, here's after, so now this 
returned because we sent it data so it prints after there it is and then uh, it says if data equals cube break well it wasn't it said hello print data dot decode so remember we encoded it over here into UDF8 now I'm decoding it back into a string so I can print it is from address and notice address says one two seven zero zero one now you're wondering what what's that I thought it was localhost well guess what the actual number for localhost is one two seven zero zero one you can actually buy t-shirts that's that say something like uh, uh, I love being at one two seven zero zero one which is another way of saying you know localhost uh, did I say home I meant localhost so uh, address is so notice S dot receive from returns not only the data that was returned but also where it came from and also I want you to notice that address is a tuple okay so this is it says from that's a tuple that's the IP address and that's the port now you're wondering where the heck did 60,200 port 60,230 come from well that's not the port that the information was sent to because the it was actually sent to port 4444 remember that's what we're listening on but this is the port where the information was sent from so this program over here this is not where it was sent from this is where we're sending to so when we run this program we didn't actually pick the port that it gets sent from that's an ephemeral port that the operating system picks, not us, not the programmer, okay? But it gets sent to port 4444, four, 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 fours. And so therefore, it tells us where the info came from. That's where the address is here on that line. So, uh, and the, that's the that's the end of it I mean I can run this again okay and uh, I can type message I could say you know goodbye and it does it again but in this program doesn't quit until the data equals Q so I'll, I'll run this again and this time I'll send the data Q and and so there you see uh, why didn't it break? Hmm. Should have broken out of the. Oh! Right! Okay, I gotta change this. I have a bug. Alright, so let's fix this. Uh, I have. I forgot to do this. Data.decode. Okay, so this is a good. Good little uh, example here. Um, I could have just simply done data equals data dot decode before instead of decoding it twice but if I save this now and now it, we have, we're gonna have to run the server again so I went control C and now we can send some data high we get a high and now this time if we send again but this time I send Q there now the now the server quits the, the, the while loop breaks and so this this example here it's a very simple example of UDP uh, I hope it's understandable and I'd like you guys to try it out try try basically copying the code and testing it remember though if you're gonna try it with two computers once again you're, you you can't use localhost you're gonna have to use that for the binding address and then here uh, instead of using localhost, you're actually going to have to type in the IP address uh, of whatever the other computer is. If it's a computer in your house, it's probably going to be 192.168 something, something, something. Okay? Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.